I apparently want to fucking torture myself with an endurance race. I'm not sure why I want to do that, but apparently I do. So we're going to do an endurance race. He's going to be on the Le Mans track, and um, I'm probably going to lose. I tested last night with the hard AI, and we're not fucking racing the hard AI. That's just ridiculously stupidly hard. Um, also, my car fucked up, and for some reason would not shift out of fifth gear, which was absolutely brilliant. Even when I went in the pit and fixed it. So, yeah, here's the car we're going to be driving. It is, um, actually, let me double check. I know it's a Porsche, and yes, it's pronounced Porsche, not Porsche. It's the Porsche AG 911 GT198. Fucking, it's a mouthful. And as you can tell, I have fucking dressed it up my little pony style because fuck you, I wanted to. Pretty much all of these vinyls are not my own work. I'm not anywhere near good enough to do that shit. Uh, a fair amount of them, like most of the sponsor decals, like Philly, All Pony Stars, Cold, Cold Stroll, all those, uh, somebody else made them originally. I recreated them though. So I take no credit for them necessarily. I take credit for recreating them from somebody else's work. Same thing with the racing number. It's uh, taken from somebody actually from Everfree Racing. So, yeah. This is the car I'm going to be using. It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's not terrible. It's not amazing either, though. Uh, the layout is all my own work, though. Like, everywhere everything's placed, the Porsche logo up there on the top, rainbow, everything, yeah. That's all me, like, laying it out as far as. The decals themselves, though, not so much. I think I've made, like, fucking right there, the logo, Canterlot Drift, Drift, which if you've watched my other Forza videos, you know that's... I don't know exactly what you would call it, it's not really my fucking company or group, just like the fucking name that I slapped on those videos for a thing. Wonderbolt's logo, not mine. The rainbow text right there is fucking like... wait, wait, there we go. Rainbow text, that's just the Forza fonts, just slapped on the windshield. So... Yeah, this is the car. And, uh... Fucking, I guess let's go. So anyways, um... I'm gonna go to event list. All the way over here, to the second to the last group, all the way down. And there it is. So, it's the Le Mans circuit. Um, we 
where the 24 hours of Le Mans is held. And 17 laps doesn't sound like a lot until you realize this track is eight and a half miles long. It takes about four minutes per lap, so you're looking at right around 68 minutes on perfect laps each time. So this is gonna be an hour long let's play at the least. And I'm gonna use the shit out of the rewind feature because I fucking crash a lot. There's one turn that fucks me over almost every single time I'll point it out. Regardless, I'm racing against the medium AI. God knows how well they're gonna do. They're probably gonna fuck up like they always do and ram me off the road and be stupid and shit. So, pretty much it's gonna all come down to how much rewind I use as to the length. And I did not have the forethought to install this game at all, so load times are retardedly long. We've been going for, according to my timer, about six minutes. The file size is 420 megabytes for six minutes, which is kind of massive. So this is going to be a big-ass file. It's going to be great to edit and upload this. Fortunately, editing is going to be mainly just synchronizing the audio to the video. And, yeah. Still loading. Oh, there we go. So you can see the it's eight and a half miles long, 8.48, ooh, so much. Um, so, yeah, I know a little bit about parts of this track, what some of them are called. And when I say that, I mean one part, which is the Mulsanne Street. I don't know what anything else is called, so... You hear me refer to the Mulsanne Street as the street, or Mulsanne, whatever happens to come up. He's just doing like a little tour of the track now, like, ooh, look at it, isn't it pretty? And now the screen is black. And now it's trees. Either way though, I'm gonna be using Rewind a lot because I know I'm gonna mess up at some point. So, this will be quite entertaining for most of you probably. The rest of you will be like, what the hell are you doing? You're just driving a car around the track, this is pointless. So, I'm going to assist to make sure I have everything set right. Um, bonus difficulties at medium, yes. Damage fuel and tire wear is on simulation. Auto brakes obviously turned off. I keep all of these on because, again, I'm shitty at this game. And I'm keeping automatic on, and I'm keeping the driving line on. Mainly because I have a really bad judge of when the fuck to brake. But they're both on because I've learned from previous experience I cannot think about what's happening on the screen and talk about random shit at the same time. Every time I do that, it makes me lose focus, and I fuck something up, and don't pay attention, and it all goes to hell. Because... I know from the Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play that I started and haven't done a damn thing on since, said I end up swinging circles, basically, because I can't fucking think of what to do. Even in the Minecraft Let's Play I'm doing, I'm pretty sure there's a fair amount of time where I'm sitting there going, uh, what was I doing? Fuck, um, shit, I forgot. So, we're gonna keep those two on. I don't give a fuck what you say about me. She's a player. Do, 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 do. I don't give a fuck. Shut up. You're not in this game. You're not playing with me. I don't care. Shut up. This is for entertainment value. Just shut the fuck up. So anyways, check out our starting grid here. There's me in the Porsche GT1. There is a guy in the 500 GTR. So basically, like, I know most of the cars I'm racing against just by looking at them because... I don't know, I'm a fucking random car girl, I know shit. So, you're gonna hear me refer to the other cars I'm racing, basically, when they pop up. So, even if you don't know cars, you'll start knowing, like, oh, that color is this car, because every one of the cars is a pretty much unique color. So, whatever. I'm rambling, so let's just get started. And more load times, awesome. So, here we go. Here's Rainbow Dash's face. There's my car revving. There's that. By the way, this is the angle that I drive from. Uh, I know a lot of people are not going to like that because they, for some reason, like having the uh, behind car angle. But, yeah, that doesn't work for me at all. So... I... Douchebag, what are you doing? Speed up! God! The capture window is doing some really strange things. I don't know if 
my frame rate was fucking up there, or if the new capture software I have does not work with Audacity running in the background. I don't know, nor will I ever until this is over, because I'm not gonna fucking stop to find out. So, yeah. Coming around the turn, I fucked that up a little bit. So now we're coming out, uh, not yet, but we're getting really close to the Mulsalam Strait, which is right about here. This is like, it's a perfectly, more or less perfectly street road, but, um, we have the Le Mans circuit turned on in this race, so it's not a street road, it actually curves twice, which you'll see coming up here in just a moment, right here. And this guy's gonna go slow and mess me up completely, out of the way. See ya! So now I just need to get ahead of this McLaren in front of me. It's the McLaren F1 GT something, I don't remember exactly. And the yellow car I just passed was a Saline S7R. I think well, it's a Saline S7, regardless. But, so... This is what we're doing. Racing. From first person view. I'm gonna block that- OH GOD I WAS NOT PAYING ATTENTION SHIT FUCK OH GOD Okay, now see that's a rewind. Rewind is very helpful, it lets you go back when you are an idiot, don't pay attention. Try this again. Hit the brakes. Much better. Now if I can get past this guy... I don't know, I'm not gonna make it past him yet. Now, I don't know why, but for some reason in Forza 3, drafting does not seem to exist, so... At least not for me. This guy's like right next to me, I can't get past him. Oh god, okay, that was my bad. But guess what, I'm passing you, so fuck you, buddy. What? Oh, you bitch! I hate you. Come on. Go faster! Where's the go fast juice? So, as you can see, we're still going. Uh, we just got out of the Mulsanne Street Street back there. But I'm nowhere near at all done with the first lap. Like, the end of the Mulsanne Street is usually what I classify as the halfway point. That's probably not accurate at all. Right up here. This turn... Right here. This is the turn that will fuck me up about a hundred times in this race. I will always break way too late or way too early. I actually got around it almost perfectly that time, which is a complete miracle. This McLaren is kicking my ass. As you can see in the top left corner, I have it turned on so I know my uh, split distance between the car ahead of me and the car behind me. And right now that McLaren is- Get your ass back there, fucking saline, asshole. Oh, I just drifted the hell out of that. That was not good, actually. So the McLaren up here is about 100-something feet ahead of me, actually. He's- I'm closing the gap now, actually. What the fuck was that?! I hit the gas and, like, the controller took a whole five seconds extra to actually register it. I am going in the grass. Fuck. And that's aliens passing me now. I could rewind, but, you know, nah. Now I've got this Maserati behind me who's gonna try to pass- Oh god! Oh brakes! Oh dear! Okay, I made it. Wow. Oh, and I actually blew past somebody. Oh yes! Okay, that's amazing. See ya! So yeah, I don't- necessarily race in a legitimate sense. If I can go off the road a little bit to pass somebody, fuck it, I don't care. I'm not here to make good times, I'm here to win the race. So, whatever. You don't really need to break there, you do need to break here. Knock over the cone for good measure, why not? Now, um, once again, showing my great expertise in racing knowledge, I don't know what the fuck those little things on the side of the truck are called. Those right there that were on the left, and here on the right. I don't know what they're called. I call them bumpity things. And, uh... I don't necessarily know what the fuck they're called. I really don't. Either way, though, uh... They're kind of there to give you an extra tiny bit of traction when you swing wide. At least that's what I've seen them used for 98% of the time. I don't know what the fuck they're actually there for. Pretty sure they're not the same things that are like on the side of the highway that tell you, hey bitch, you're going off the road. So, 
That's what I've seen them use, though, is, like, they swing out wide from a turn in a race, and they barely, like, get one or two tires up on them. And, you know, it's just kind of, like, to give you a little extra room. So, as you can see now, I'm in first place, and I am dominating completely and totally. Uh, fucking... I can press Y to look behind me. You can't even see them back there. Well, actually, you can see a little bit of that saline coming up. But, uh... Yeah. So, here we go. This is pretty much where everything starts being amazing and perfect, because... Unless I fuck up royally, they're not gonna pass me again. So... Yeah. I don't, even, I don't know what to say, really. Back on the street road. Going off the track, shit. Trying to adjust my volume level on my headset so I can hear outside the headphones, even. And hit the brakes. And brake again. A little early there. But it's all good. So, how are you? How you doing? Yeah? Well, me, I'm driving. I'm driving like a fucking crazy person. Actually, I'm driving sort of considerately. Considerately? Conservatively. There we go. God, I'm retarded. So, turn this, hit the brakes. That was almost too late. Here's the turn of death and destruction. I don't know what this turn is called. I really want to know what this turn is called so that I can curse it every two seconds appropriately. I actually got around the turn perfectly that time. I'll fuck it up. I will. I guarantee you, before this race is over with, I will fuck that turn up at least once. Probably at least three times. The medium AI apparently might as well just not exist. It's like this game has two difficulty levels, and that's... Are you even in the same game as me? And am I even in the same game as you? Because on hard, the AI explodes past you. There is no way you can catch them almost. At least when I tested last night, I fucking ran this track eight times, just testing it to make sure. And by the time I quit, the car that was in first, I was in second place. The car that was in first was like 8,000 feet ahead of me. So I'm not exaggerating either. It was literally up in the top corner. He said like 8,000 feet. So I was like, this is not going to happen. This is just not going to happen. No way. So, um, what else? Oh, down on the bottom right, you can see my uh, rev counter and speedometer. And, uh, on the right side of that, I don't know how well you can make it out on YouTube with shitty quality and the small video size. There's a very faint, oh, I'm going off the road like an idiot. Talking just ruins me. You can barely see it, probably, but there's a uh, faint gray bar that is steadily dwindling. And that is my fuel level, because I have uh, fuel simulation and tire simulation turned on. So, we'll get to the tires in a second. But so as I go around this track, I am losing fuel, you know, like you would in an actual car, because that just makes sense. So, eventually I will need to make a pit stop for fuel, which probably right around, uh, let's say lap 9, probably be a good place. Um, but yeah, fuel will run out actually relatively quickly, especially in a uh, GT car like this. But, more or less though, uh, I'm gonna need to stop eventually. Forgot all about the tires, actually I was gonna bring them up on the street there. But, so, there's a couple of different things you can do. This game really needs a call-out system so you can just push a button and have, like, an automated voice read to you your damage stats. But if I push right on the D-pad, I can bring up my damage, which is just popped up there on the right. Um, if I push it again, it gives me the heat of my tires, which... I mean, it really doesn't give you much bearing in this game, to know the heat of your tires. That I've ever seen, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, get the brakes here. Posting around these corners. We can put that away now. So if I push up on the D-pad, it gives me, um, a lot of different readings. The general, don't need that. Friction on my tires, don't need that. Suspension, don't need it. Uh, it gives you a G counter, don't need that. Here's what I need. The miscellaneous info on your tires. As you can see at the 
uh, there's four tires, obviously, because I'm in a fucking car. And at the bottom of each tire's stats is the wear damage. And, uh, I fucked that turn up really bad. But basically what that is, is telling you how worn your tires are from you driving around, obviously. And they're nowhere near me. So, basically the higher that it gets, the less traction I will have over time. And the less traction you have, the shittier you turn, essentially. Everything else, I mean, it's, it's pretty much useless. Like, camber, don't care, speed, don't care, temperature, don't care, pressure, you can't get flats in this game. I just fucked that up so badly. Wow. Rewind. And go. So anyways, like I was saying, so everything else just doesn't even apply. It's The wear is mainly what you need to worry about. Everything else, I guess, is just for, like, major car aficionados, gearheads, petrol heads, whatever you want to say. Um, shit, turn it. I did it again, I got it perfect, wow. But so the wear is the main thing you need to be concerned with, because when your tires get to probably about 75, you're going to start noticing major differences in how you turn. Though, so the wear in this game is actually very intelligent, unlike in uh, Forza 2, which by the way, I'll get to why I'm not playing Forza 4 later, but the wear in Forza 2 was ridiculous. It made no logical sense, like after about 5 laps, your tires will be gone. So, this is much more intelligent and sensible about tire wear. So, I'm gonna actually need to stop for fuel long before I need to stop for tires. Still nobody behind me. It's about 800 feet of difference. I'm, I'm perfectly fine, more or less. They're not gonna catch me anytime soon. At this point, it's me versus myself. But if I put it on hard right now, I'd probably be in third place or something. Jesus Christ, I messed that turn up so horribly. So, back to what I was saying about Forza 4. The reason I'm playing Forza 3, I actually had to go on eBay and order this game for $8. Which isn't a lot, it's just stupid that I sold it in the first place. Because I thought I was never going to play Forza 3 again. Then I got a capture card and I was like, hey, it'd be fun to do an endurance race, because I'm an idiot. It recorded for Let's Play! So that's what I'm doing now. But... The reason I'm doing this in Forza 3 and not Forza 4 is simply, and very simply, because there are no endurance races in Forza 4. Apparently people got fucking shitty asshole butthurt about endurance races being in Forza at all. Like, oh, I don't want to drive around the track, like, 30 times. Boring and stupid. Well, then don't fucking play a racing game. If you are into racing, you will actually enjoy an endurance race. I don't know why, but for some reason it's a peaceful, fun thing for me to do. I'm enjoying this right now. I mean, I don't know what the fuck you feel watching it, but I assume if you're watching it, you must care slightly, or you want to hear me ramble and talk about dumb shit, which I'm not doing at all. But so that's why I'm not on Forza 4, just for that reason. If Forza 4 had endurance races, I would be on Forza 4 in a heartbeat. Um... I do my other things on Forza 4, the, uh... Pony car drift videos, because they're fun. Uh, I still need to record the Stig's video, actually. Uh, shout out to the Stig. But I still need to record that video because I just recently finally got my hands on the unlocked vinyl for the Stig Pony. So I can actually make his car now. But, uh, I will do that probably... Well, today's Sunday. Um, I can't check the date because I'm driving. But, uh, it's Sunday. April the... 14th, actually. I remember now. So today's April 14th, Sunday, and uh, probably next weekend they'll make the Stig's car and shit. Um, okay, I thought my car was going to get stuck in fifth gear again. Jesus Christ. But, uh, my mind is blanking. Oh, turn. That was terrible. So anyways, though, I have to make the Stig's car still. Um, don't know what I'm going to do after that. Uh, somebody from the uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic discussion board actually suggested uh, I do, in Forza 4, a two-person race with a Rainbow Dash Pagani, and then to make a Gilda car, you know, Gilda the Griffin, who everybody else hates. I think that she will come back for a redemption episode like Trixie did. I don't know for sure, obviously. I'm not fucking insider knowledge. But... I don't know, Gilda 
like, as much of a bitch as she was to Fluttershy especially, I don't know, there was something about her, like, just the character and the appearance I actually liked. Yes, I'm talking about My Little Pony, shut the fuck up, I don't care. So, anyways, uh, I have a Reno, uh, Reno, Rainbow Dash Pagani Zonda set up on Forza 4, which I've put pictures of in places, some of you may have seen them, some of you may have not, I don't know. Um, I still need to make a Gilda car, I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I have to find a car that is about a match for the Pagani that I chose for Rainbow, so that will come later. Um, either way, the person that suggested that idea for having a two-player race between the two cars was... I don't know how the hell to pronounce the guy's name, so I'm just gonna say Wader. It's W-A-D-R, all capitals on the Rooster Teeth site. Shout out to Wader. Water. What? Wader? Wader? I don't know how you would pronounce it. Um, he's told me, though, that his name stands for With All Due Respect, but regardless, uh, he was the one that suggested that. If he ever gets a hold of Force of Four, I'm probably going to have a race with him, and then use the replay footage later to record a... I don't know what they're called. I guess it's not really a pony drift car video because there's no drifting. So just a pony car exhibition video in Forza 4. And I'm going off the road there. Shit. Regardless, though, so that's still in the works. Um, let's see. I guess I can update on my game situation. Um, well, where the hell do I even start with that? Jesus. Uh... Well, a very good friend of mine on the Rooster Teeth site by the name of Red Frankie, shout out to Red Frankie, shout out to Red Frankie again, and Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, because he told me to mention him every two seconds in the videos, so, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie, Frankie, Red Red, Red Red Frankie, Frankie, Red Frankie, Red Frankie. Anyways, um, very good friend of mine, we actually did a, uh, game exchange, not for permanent, uh, permanence, permanent training, whatever. We just train at games to borrow from each other. Um, he borrowed Borderlands 2 from me, which I actually got from Clearly Clear, shout out to Clearly Clear. On the Rooster Teeth site, I got that from him as a gift. Shortly after the game came out, I was bitching because I didn't have Borderlands 2, and he was like, hey, I'll buy you Borderlands 2, and I'm like, okay. So I got a free copy of Borderlands 2, so I'm really happy about that. But so he borrowed my Borderlands 2, um, and he borrowed Catherine, the game that for some reason everybody hates. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's not hard either, but then again, I've only played it on easy mode because I'm a loser. But so, he borrowed Borderlands 2, Catherine, and Sega Superstars, All-Star, whatever, Tennis, because I don't give a shit. It's just, it's a terrible game. And, um... Uh, I keep stopping, like, talking. I keep not talking. Pausing, talking, talk, pausing. I don't know what the fuck the word would be. I keep not talking, though, because I'm thinking about where I'm gonna go next, in terms of talking. But, uh... So from him, I borrowed Dead Space 1, because I'd never played it. And I played the demo for it a long time ago, and absolutely hated it. The demo for Dead Space made me hate Dead Space so much, Every time somebody talked about Dead Space, I was like, oh, I don't care. Fucking E3? Every time they talked about Dead Space, like, 3, because that was whenever I started actually watching E3 on games. Well, blah, blah, blah. For cheap. Wow, I am dumb! Every time I watched E3 on G4, the channel, which now is becoming fucking the Esquire Network or some dumb shit, I don't even know. But every time I would see something on Dead Space 3, I was just like, eh, I don't care. And just get past it with the DVR. I just, I did not care about Dead Space at all. Fucking Rooster Teeth gave away those, uh, replica plasma cutters, uh, for one of their RTX panels or something? I think it was actually the podcast panel, because I remember hearing about it. I've never been to RTX, so it had to have been. I was like, oh, what a shitty prize to give away. Like, who the fuck cares? The demo for Dead Space essentially ruined Dead Space for me up until probably a couple of weeks ago, whenever I borrowed the game from Red Frankie. And I played the game... And the reason I wanted to play it was because, you know, in my usual boredom, I uh, went on YouTube to uh, Michael of Rooster Teeth, shout out to Michael of Rooster Teeth, Michael Jones, Michael Ragequit Jones, 
I went to his personal YouTube channel, and he is a 17 port Let's Play of Dead Space 2. And I thought, you know, I don't like Dead Space, I don't really care, but it's Michael, he's gonna be hilarious, and he's gonna scream, it's gonna be worth my time just to watch it. So, I downloaded that, because I uh, have a plugin in Firefox that lets me download videos from YouTube. And I watched them all, and I was like, you know, this game actually looks pretty good. And so, after many people told me to give it a try, I finally decided to try Dead Space 1. So, I went on eBay, trying to find Dead Space 1, thinking, oh, you know, I'll play it and see what it's like. Yeah, no. If you want a copy of Dead Space 1, if you want a physical copy, you can get it Games on Demand on the Xbox for, like, 10 or $20. I'm not sure how much it is now. Maybe 15 I don't know. But, uh, if you want an actual physical copy, you're not gonna get it. Even the Platinum Hits version, which is, like, the shitty second run of the game that nobody ever wants in terms of collector value, even that one is still upwards of 40 or $50 for the cheapest. The game is exceedingly rare. If you have the original that's not Platinum Hits, then it's, like, $100. Even if you've, like, played the shit out of it, as long as it is in decent enough condition, like, you know, the case is not fucked up, and the, D, the game is not scratched hell and back, probably about $100. So, uh, there was no way in hell I was ever going to get Dead Space, unless I went games on demand, and I'm a cheap bitch, I'm not going to spend, you know, like, 10 to $20 on a game that I don't have a physical copy of, just because that's how I am. Especially a game that's worth that much, I actually want to see if I can get my hands on the actual thing. But so, I managed to borrow it from Red Frankie because he had a copy, so I borrowed that from him, and I'll get back to that in a second, I'm just going to go ahead and list off the other two games that I have. I borrowed that from him, I borrowed Lollipop Chainsaw because I've been wanting to play that for a while. Um, and he actually, because it only costs like $3 to buy on eBay, I think, like, I don't know, it's really cheap, like 3 5 maybe like $8 at the most. But he actually just straight up gave me his copy of Mass Effect 1 because that's another game that I've never played. Not that I've never wanted to play Mass Effect, it's just... I've not had the desire to play a really engaging, long, and in-depth role-playing game for a while now. I don't hate those kind of games, I actually love them, I've played most of the Final Fantasies. Uh, I just haven't been in the mood to, like, you know, I want to sit down and lose half my life in this game for an RPG. And again, nothing against that, I fucking would love to do it later on whenever I'm in that mood. It's just, you know, I'm not in the mood to do that kind of thing right now. You know, kind of like a movie too, like sometimes you're just sitting there and all of a sudden you're like, Damn! I really want a fucking grilled cheese sandwich! So you go to the kitchen and you make one! You know, you don't want a grilled cheese sandwich every single day. I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. But the mood just does not hit me to go and play a really long RPG, so I haven't actually, like, bought a copy of Mass Effect. But, so he gave me his copy of that. But back to Dead Space. So... Like I said, Dead Space was ruined for me because the demo that you can download on the Xbox Live Marketplace, the demo is so bad. I don't even know, like, I tried all throughout Dead Space to figure out where the hell the demo was in the game. I don't know for sure that it was. I probably just can't remember because the demo I tried playing so long ago, but I have to, hold on, I have to scratch my nose. It's really itching. Okay. So... I tried playing the demo forever ago, and it was so terrible. The demo does not give you any sort of info. It doesn't give you any sort of primer as to this button does this, this button does that, so on and so forth. It just throws you in the game and says go. And, uh, I'm half convinced to say that the demo is also fucking on impossible, because the Necromorphs killed me in, like, a quarter of a second. I could not do anything. So... After the demo of that game, I was just like, you know, I don't like this. This is stupid. I hate this. I'm never going to like this game. I don't know what the big deal is. It's just not good. So, what was Dead Space like? 2008, I think? I think Dead Space was 2008. I should have the brakes there. I don't know. I think it was 2008. My nose is itching like a fucking crack whore. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's, uh, I'm broken the mic down. Okay, back to this. But so... Still itching! God damn! 
but I keep losing my track and I have to stop. Where the hell was I? I completely forgot. Oh yeah. So Dead Space is like 2008, I think. I avoided a amazing game for almost five years because the demo ruined it that badly. So if you want to play Dead Space, if you've never played Dead Space before, do not play the demo for Dead Space 1. It's shit. I actually need to re-download it and go back and check it out. I'll probably do a blind let's play in that just to uh, fucking see how much better I am now as opposed to how I was years ago. But, so I borrowed Dead Space from Red Frankie, as I said about a hundred times, and I sat down to play it because, you know, Michael made me want to play it. So I sat down and started playing it, and immediately, they, you know, fucking gave me the list of what the fuck you actually have to do in the game, and it was really fun, and I'm like, hey, this is really good. And so I went through the game, and I finished my first run, and immediately started again, like New Game Plus on the medium mode, which I would played on before, and ran around a bit, uh, messed around with the Force Gun, which is not that great Dead Space 1, I didn't know that at the time, because I'd only seen Michael's Dead Space 2 Let's Play, I thought, oh, it's definitely going to be the same. No, it's not. But so, I played around with that for a little bit, and then went uh, and played Impossible Mode, which... I don't know why it's called impossible mode, it was actually fairly simple. So, did that. Impossible mode took me like all of like maybe two or three days to beat. Um, granted, I did use the uh, pause menu cheat codes for Dead Space, which give you. I forget how much exactly, like. I know it gives you like eight or nine power nodes, like once all the codes are all input. You get like about eight power nodes, and I think it's like 14 or 15 or 16 or 17. Something, a decent, like, 17, 13, whatever thousand credits. And that was really helpful. So, and then there are two other codes. Uh, there's one to refill your oxygen, and there's another to instantly refill your stasis. I abused the hell out of that stasis code. But, other than that, like, even if I hadn't, I think I would eventually have made it through impossible mode. You know, impossible mode is not that difficult. It's basically just a matter of... Don't be an idiot and spam your trigger, be intelligent, watch what you're doing, don't fucking get yourself killed. So, beat impossible mode, uh, went back on normal, got, uh, actually no correction, because I was an idiot. So, after I beat impossible mode, uh, I had a ton of money left over. So, I went back into impossible mode to get the achievements for killing 30 enemies with uh, each weapon individually, and I was trying to get the achievement for maxing out every weapon, which would have meant a ton of power nodes, and it was taking me forever. I think I played all the way through impossible mode again, up to like chapter 10, and I had maxed out all but two weapons, and I was just like, you know, this isn't gonna happen. So I went back to normal mode, um, because I remembered also from normal mode, that I hadn't input the codes yet, you can only input the codes once per new game. After that, even on New Game Plus, you can't input them again. So I hadn't input the codes on normal mode yet, so I went back and did that. I had a bunch of money left over from my first run, and had a few power nodes left over that I hadn't used in the Force Gun. And so, I eventually ended up getting the uh, achievement for powering up all weapons, or maxing out all weapons with power nodes, on normal mode. And it took me like, up to chapter 7, I think? It was just it was ridiculously easy. But so, um, I thousand to Dead Space. That was really great. I love that game. Uh, I wanted to keep playing it, actually. I, I, I got to the first boss in Lollipop Chainsaw. Uh, Zed, who is amazing. Fucking the punk rock zombie guy. But, I just could not put down Dead Space. I couldn't stop playing it. So, uh, recently, I went online on eBay and bought a very abused copy. Like, the case is so bad off, like, it's falling apart, the case is. But I got a really abused copy of Dead Space 2. Um, I bought Dead Space Ignition, which is an arcade, Xbox Live arcade game for Dead Space. 
It's not Dead Space like at all, it's basically a couple of different puzzles. But, uh... The reason I got that was because, for one, it's apparently, and it kind of was, I'm not done with it yet, I have to get online still to get the online achievements, which there's two of those. But it's a fairly easy 200 gamer score, and I'm all about gamer score. So I got that, but also, by beating that game, you, um, unlock in Dead Space 2 something called the Hacker Suit, which, compared to other things, is not that great, but it's better than nothing at the start of the game. So... I got that, uh, the hacker suit, none of that. I also unlocked access to these things called conduit rooms in Dead Space 2, which will give me a ton of extra ammo and some nice little upgrades. Which is really, really good. Because what I'm dreading on Dead Space 2 is hardcore mode. Now, if you haven't watched Michael's channel on YouTube where he talks about it quite a few times in his uh, Let's Play, he even has a video for Dead Space 2 hardcore, it's about 25 minutes where he just bitches about it, and I guarantee I'm probably going to do the same thing. Hardcore mode in Dead Space 2 is you play the game on the... Not the hardest difficulty, I think, because you play on Survivalist and not Zealot. Zealot is the hardest actual, like, the enemies are this strong and you do this much damage and you get this much ammo and health drop. Zealot is the hardest, Survivalist is the second hardest. But hardcore mode is... You play on survivalist, but the game disables checkpoints, so you can only get a checkpoint from saving and from when you swap discs to disc 2. But the game disables all checkpoints, and the only kind of checkpoints you get are your saves at the save stations in the game, but you're only allowed to have three saves. So... Basically, that's gonna be fucking hell, because that means I'm gonna end up playing multiple chapters over again whenever I die. I am not looking forward to hardcore mode at all. I'm gonna get my ass kicked, I'm gonna get destroyed, I'm probably going to hate everybody in the universe when I'm doing it. Might do a let's play on it, I don't know. Probably not, because I guarantee I'm gonna get my ass kicked so much. And I need to remember next time to go into the pits. I have not been paying attention to that. I'll get to that in a minute though. But so, um... Where was I? Oh yeah. So I'm not looking forward to hardcore mode, but I want a perfect Dead Space, so... Or perfect Dead Space 2, wow, anyway. So, hopefully I'm gonna do that. I also got the severed DLC. So, hopefully I'm gonna perfect Dead Space 2 at some point in my life. And then I can go into Dead Space 3 eventually, and probably suck at that. Because hardcore mode in Dead Space 3 is, um... You get all the saves you want, but... As soon as you die once, you can't access the save anymore. So, basically, if you die, you're fucked. But, somebody in the first Chief Sponsor chat actually brought up a good point that I have to double check around for. But if it works, it's that, you know, if you die, just dashboard really quickly. Which you don't know the dashboarding is, it's hitting the uh, Xbox gym on your controller and pressing Y to go back to the dashboard. It's a trick that a lot of people use for a lot of different games to make sure the game doesn't save something so that it doesn't count against you for a certain achievements. And, um, so... Yeah, basically it's just a matter of not dying in Dead Space 3, which is also going to be hard. But, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So... Damn, that lasted me forever, actually, talking about that. Um, what else? What else, what else, what else? I can't- oh, I'm going through road, shit. Oh yeah, so, um, god, my nose keeps itching! I hit the mic that time. Okay, so, back to my game situation. Um, after Dead Space 2, actually, I might start before then, I don't know, because I still need to beat Lollipop Chainsaw that I borrowed from Red Frankie, because, you know, he tells me all the time that he's already beaten it, he doesn't need it back necessarily immediately. But I feel bad having the game and not playing it, so I need to play Lollipop Chainsaw at some point. My capture is freaking me out because it's moving about a thousand times slower than everything is on the screen. I'm gonna be so pissed off if all this is unusable. I would even fucking murder somebody. But, uh... So I'll probably do Lollipop Chainsaw next. Other than that, though, from the, uh... 
Microsoft game sale they had, the huge fucking sale where they sold everything at fucking ridiculous prices. I also bought um, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 collection for $10, and uh, I bought uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary for $5, because I love Tomb Raider. I've beaten, like, one chapter on Tomb Raider, and I need to go and beat that game. And then I have Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 to replay and get all the achievements in. I'm not gonna get all the achievements in that. I just- Ah, oh, shit! See, look, I knew it! I fucked the turn up. I knew it. I fucking knew it was gonna happen. I'm surprised it took me, like, almost ten laps to get there, but I did fuck it up finally. And that turn fucks me up almost every single time at least once. By the way, I double rewound because I knew I didn't break soon enough the first time, so... But, um... So I know I'm not gonna get all the achievements in the Metal Gear games. I, it's just, no. The dog tags in Metal Gear Solid 2, getting all of those is an achievement. Fuck. You. There's no way in hell I would ever do that. It's just ridiculously hard. I know it's possible, but I don't have the patience for it, I don't have the skill for it. I've never played Metal Gear Solid on anything aside from, like, medium. Because I care about the story. I'm not one of those fucking complainer bitches that's all like, Oh, the cutscenes are too long! Ah! Fucking, it's a story. Shut the fuck up. Enjoy it. Granted, if you're playing Metal Gear Solid, if, you, if you're not playing it for the sake of hearing a good story, you're not gonna like it. Metal Gear Solid is pretty much a fucking interactive novel. But I love it. It's fucking amazing. It's a very good story. I don't care so much if the gameplay is far and few between. It's just fun to me to actually be told a decent story that, by the way, does make sense. People that fucking like the story are like, oh, it makes no sense. Fuck! I forgot to go to the pits! God damn it! Oh, fuck this. I'm gonna rewind all the way back, because I need to go to the pits. Fucking knock some codes down there. Keep going. Keep going. Right. So, yeah, I definitely need to go to the pits, though, because I'm running out of fuel. Um, let me do this really quickly. We'll check my tire wear once I get in the pits. There we go. So once you get in the pit lane, it starts auto-pitting. Uh, my tire is only 33% wear, see? I'm mainly going into the pits because I need fuel. Actually, that's my uh, damage. The only damage I've taken is a little bit to the side skirts, somehow. So, here we go. Back to the race. Now, as you can see, I've dropped down to third place, which, you know, at this point, it's not even a problem, because I'll just catch up eventually. But regardless, they have to pit at some point. They haven't yet, I know, because I wasn't that far ahead of them. So, they've not gone to the pits yet. They'll probably have to pit next lap, which means that I'm going to eventually pass them again, regardless of anything else. Um, completely forgot what I was talking about from Olympia Solid, actually. Oh shit, I drifted that. But, so I still need to play Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. I still need to play the rest of Tomb Raider Legend. Or Anniversary. No, yeah, it is Legend! Wow, I'm dumb! It's Tomb Raider Legend, not Tomb Raider Anniversary. Anniversary is the one that's like an HD remake of Tomb Raider 1. Tomb Raider Legend is the one that you fucking get. Spoiler alert, it's been out way more than two weeks. Tomb Raider Legend's the one where you get fucking Excalibur, King Arthur's sword, and you shoot green waves of death at people. It's fucking amazing. If you don't like the old Tomb Raider games, shut the fuck up, you're stupid, they're great, you're just dumb. So... Uh, we're about halfway through this race now. It's been about 37 minutes, so yeah, like I said, definitely an hour or something for a Let's Play. Um... I keep losing track of everything. Oh yeah, games. So, right now on my uh, roster for things I need to play, Dead Space 2, Lollipop Chainsaw, Mass Effect at some point, Tomb Raider Legend, uh, my brain is, oh yeah, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, which essentially counts as two games, so now we're up to seven. Um, I rented, uh, over Saturday, I rented Bioshock Infinite from Redbox. It is very good. I'm actually a loser. I never beat the first Bioshock. I played up through, uh, the part where you get to, like, the greenhouse or whatever. The, uh, fucking tree area. I don't know my words. I played up to there. 
and uh, set it down, and then I let a friend borrow it, and uh, I just told him, you know what, keep it, uh, it was a good game and all, but I'm not gonna play it, I don't know why, I guess I just kinda like, stopped and just didn't come back to it for a reason, I just passed both those guys like fucking nobody's business, it was way too simple. But, so I let him have that game, and then I think he lost it, or sold it, probably, I don't know, like an asshole. But, so, I never beat Bioshock 1, I never even played Bioshock 2, but, uh, I played Bioshock Infinite, I'm just past the point where, uh, I don't know what to say to not spoil it, this guy is trying to pass me. Oh, I'm just past the point where you get shock jockey. That's exactly where I am, pretty much. Oh god, I fucked that all up. I fucked that all up. Oh god. Rewind. But yeah, that was, like, exactly where I stopped uh, to return it to Redbox. I had just picked up shock jockey and walked outside to hit the checkpoint and stop playing, so I got to get back to Redbox. But it's a very good game so far, actually. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to play it more, but I'm a poor bitch, and I didn't want to rent it much longer than a day. So, I fucked up that turn again! God damn it! Well, fuck it, I'll just keep going. Because nobody passed me and I didn't crash, so whatever. But, uh... So, you could technically add Bioshock Infinite to, like, the list as the eighth game that I need to play. Because I want to play that again. Um, I need to go back and, uh, I rented Tomb Raider, the new one, from Redbox as well, about... Actually, it might have been about a month ago now. Pretty much whenever it came out, like, the same... Actually, the same day, I think, that it came out, I rented Tomb Raider from Redbox. And it was fucking amazing. If you have not played the new Tomb Raider yet, fucking punch yourself in the face and then go out and fucking play it. If you have to rent it, if you have to buy it, if you have to go to a friend's house and steal it from them while they're asleep, I don't care. You need to play the new Tomb Raider. It is amazing. It is... Fucking, it's my pick for this year's Game of the Year. I don't know what the fuck else is gonna come out. I don't even care what else is gonna come out, probably. That game is amazing. Moving along, though. So, Tomb Raider can get out of the list as ninth because I need to replay it and uh, unlock the other achievements. I got about half the achievements just playing through it. So, I need to get the other ones on it, so that's probably nine. Um, what else do I have? I know I have more. Actually, that may be it. Yeah, I think that's it. So anyways, though, um... Oh, shit. My capture window is doing something really weird. Hang on. Oh, fuck. I think my capture froze. Fucking son of a bitch! God damn it. My capture froze. I'm gonna have to fucking stop recording. Oh, I can't stop recording! I can't stop recording. I cannot stop the recording. No, I stopped the recording. Okay. Fucking... Well, this fucking is great! God damn it. God damn it! Alright, let's see what the f- ah, shit. Fuck. Okay. So I just closed my capture window because it fucked up royally. So... I'm going to go back and replay the footage that I just recorded in Forza, because if it's as choppy as it was in the display window, in the preview window, then this is all fucked. I'll just- if, if it's really choppy, then I will stop recording this part after I curse about a thousand times, and, uh... Actually, it looks pretty good. Well, no, it doesn't, actually. No, it does. No, it doesn't. God damn it, it's shitty, it's terrible looking. What the fuck? Oh my god! It looks like utter shit. Like, it keeps like, the frames are jumping and fucking, uh. Well, that might be Windows Media Player, hold on, let's try it in VLC. You're fucking staring at a black screen right now, fucking being entertained by nothing. I might fucking throw some shit in here, I don't know. God damn it, god fucking damn it! I'm so pissed! So, I'm so, I'm just aggravated and fucking annoyed. Oh my god, it looks like complete shit! It's unbearable, this- God damn it, god fucking damn it! I'm gonna have to do this all over again. 
What the fuck? The new capture software is shit running with Audacity. What the hell? What the f- I should have tested first. I should have fucking tested this first. God damn it. God damn it! I just wasted like an hour! Fucking god damn it, man! Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. <sighs> Fuck. Shit. God damn it! Well, this is great. Fucking, I'm gonna have to re-record everything I just did. God damn it. I'm gonna fucking- fuck this. I'm gonna stop recording, but I'm gonna fucking release this video, because I fucking talked my ass off. I'm not gonna fucking do nothing. Just, he's gonna be fucking labeled as, LET'S NOT PLAY FORTSA FUCKING 3! Because that's what the fuck happened! We're not playing it! Because you can't fucking see anything! You're gonna see the choppiest fucking stupid audio you've ever seen in your life! It's gonna be like, what the fuck is this bitch doing? What the fuck? This is stupid! I'm- I'm so pissed! I'm so pissed the fuck off right now! God damn it! God damn it! Fucking an hour! An hour! AN HOUR! I went for! And just nothing! Nothing! It's like it barely even happened! You can barely fucking see anything! It's the choppiest, shittiest, stupid video ever! I'm putting it up though! You know why? Because I recorded this for a fucking hour! I will not have an hour of my life go to fucking waste! No! Fucking no! You will see this, you will probably not enjoy it because it's that shitty, I will go back to the old fucking record software because apparently that's what I need to do! God damn it! I'd say she's handling things pretty well, considering.